I am Stephen Power. I'm a photographer and teacher based on Valencia in County Kerry, Ireland. Welcome to my series of teaching videos. This one is about making local hue adjustment changes in Lightroom Classic 2020. Hi, hello, I'm down here. I'm Stephen Power. Um, oh, don't worry about that pointy thing behind me. It's my Iwi electronic wind instrument. Um, I won't be playing that today, so you've no need to worry. What I will be doing today is talking you through a new tool in Adobe Lightroom Classic version 9.3, uh, which was launched in June 2020, and it's the local adjustment tool which is found under the adjustment brush in the develop module of Lightroom Classic. What, um, what it does basically is allow you to change the colour of a colour that's already existing in the photograph but selectively. So for example um, if I wanted to change just this block of blue on the umbrella, I can do so without having to change all the other blue in the whole photograph. Previously, I would come down to the HSL Hue Saturation Luminance panel and use this target tool, for example, with Hue selected, push up will change it to purple go through the purples to the magentas come back the other way um, back through the blues and the greens but what you can see is happening is that all the other blues and greens in the in the image are, are changing as well or anything with a bit of blue or green in it is changing so that's not necessarily what we want to do we might just want to change one one piece and we can do that now uh, using the new tool in the adjustment brush. Um, before I make the change, I'm going to um, duplicate this image, um, so create a virtual copy. So we've got two images in the thumbnails. Now, because I, I like the original, um, it's a nice photograph of Vita and Melanie on the quay in Port McGee in County Kerry. Um, and I'd like to keep that as it is and not play about with it too much. So while I'm experimenting, I've made a, a copy of it that we can work on and then keep both if we like them. Um, the next thing I want to do is make sure that um, I'm actually working close enough up and I've set the navigator tool to one to two ratio. So if I select that, it'll zoom in quite nicely on the umbrella. You can change this um, to go even bigger or smaller. And you, if you play around with that, you can get some idea of um, how that will work. Um, then if we go into the tool itself, first thing I want to do is make sure that everything is zeroed out. So if we had anything already changed in here, the shadows or the highlights or where it might be. If we click on the name of that tool, it will zero it back. And so it gives us a good starting point. Then I want to come down and make sure that the auto mask is on, ticked on. So that will help that when we're actually using the tool, we can um, make sure that if we go over um, into another section that we didn't want to change, it may, it often prevents that. Um, it's not perfect, um, but we can at least gives us a, a fighting chance. Now, because we've already started here, um, we have to activate the area again. Um, which I did just by clicking on the silver button and making it black. And then 
I, like, I just like to sort of paint um, just to see where I am and then make a difference or make a change if you like um, it's with this it's just a question of unless you've got it in your mind already just then you need to decide what colour you want it to be so let's maybe go for a, a red to contrast with the blue and I'm just moving the hue slider till I find a decent colour, a nice red um, and then literally just paint um, what I've found is that some areas need to be gone over more than once to really make uh, a difference and if you zoom right in on this now you'll be able to see some spots um, it might be necessary sometimes to um, spot those perhaps in uh, using the spot healing brush here or in Photoshop um, I'm holding alt down and then going over the areas that I didn't want to paint over for example see that now if I was doing this you know for a professional reason or for a club competition or something like that I would definitely get closer um, to make sure I could see what I was doing zoom right in all the hold the um, space bar and then move the hand to you know just to fill in the, the gaps and stuff like that so if we like that area for example we can then click on new to get a new brush and that will deactivate the first one and then we can work on another area <clears throat> for example if we go for the hull of the boat now just to get an idea where I am paint first then change the, the hue um, let's go for a a green maybe okay so just paint over on the green um, again as I said it's good idea to to adjust the, the size of the image that you're working on um, finer details and also the size of the brush so if we go back into the navigator, try, oh, far too big, try um, a two to one, space bar down, um, get the hand tool and then start moving. Um, use, I'm using the square brackets to change the size of the brush. So if you look on your keyboard, you'll see, um, uh, a key with two square brackets on left and right and um, open and close brackets the open bracket will make the brush smaller and the close bracket will make the brush bigger so play around with that until you've got the right size brush for the area that you're working on try not to go over the over the edges too much but if you do then hit the alt key um, and wipe wipe it off basically and as you can see here it's not really filling in all the tiny spots. This is an issue I've found with it. It isn't, it isn't necessarily filling in the gaps. Um, this could be a problem with the program or my computer, or not entirely sure, but it's certainly something if you're doing this, you know, for um, an important reason, then that you might have to um, think about filling in in some other way perhaps with the um, one of the tools uh, in Photoshop spot healing brush maybe um, alt key to wipe out 
any bits that you didn't want. Now, for example, if we wanted to change the colour of the boat behind, it's quite interesting because this boat has got um, three panels on it. So I'll select new brush. Make sure that everything is zeroed out. And then if we paint over this area, you can see all three areas change at once, which is quite, you know, unless you've got a particular color in mind, it's not really a problem. I just thought it was quite an interesting thing to do really. Um, and then if we take off the boy, I'll just make that a bit smaller. I'll try changing the colour of Vita's shoes, but this is the problem that we had before with the boat, I think it's going to arise here, is that it doesn't necessarily work that well when there are other colours conflicting. Let's give her some purple shoes to match her coat. I'm not changing the brush obviously when I move over here because we don't get, want to give it odd shoes. Um, okay, now what did I say? We're going to match her coat. It doesn't match. So let's try and do that. Gives you an idea of what can be done. Um, I think that's it now, really, just to, to show you how the brush works. Um, let's just go back into the library mod module and put the two together. So you can see where we started and where we ended up and at this distance it looks fine. Um, it's not perfect. Um, as I say, so this might be something that maybe the programmers might want to look at um, in the future. But for now it's a, it's, it's a very interesting tool. And I hope you enjoyed this overview of the local hue adjustment brush in the current version of Adobe Lightroom Classic version 9.3. Bye for now.